Hi, in this episode of Toys Bag Zen, I'm back to 3D printing again. I found a file on Thingiverse for Maximilian from the Black Hole movie, and I decided to make a figure. So let's do that. This figure was a little too small with the file, so I actually enlarged it uh, using my software that I have on my computer. And I wanted to make it the same scale as the three and three quarter size figures that came out around the 70s. And so that's what I've done here. Actually, I found this little clear stand too. I think this is actually a, a projectile for a Marvel figure or something like that, but. I found it in a parts bin, thought I would use it as a clear stand because I want him to stand taller than the three and three quarter figures. He's pretty big in the movie. So we're gonna put this together and see how it articulates. I haven't really put it together yet. I just cleaned up all of the edges after printing it, making sure that everything was gonna to fit together um, and making sure that everything was gonna articulate the way that it's been designed to. So once you get everything fit in together, then you just put the front on it, it holds everything in place. So we've got hip articulation, we've got arm articulation and head articulation. Now this figure is much different than the original figure that was uh, released in the 70s. I think it was released by Mego. The arms on the original figure was just one long chrome arm. And in the movie, he had three, almost three arms as part of his arm with tools at the end. And so that's what we have here. I really like this design. Uh, here's the figure here showing what it looks like with other three and three quarter inch figures and I think it looks good. If I was going to do this again I think I would maybe scale him up maybe a little bit more so that he would tower over them. So I'm going to be using this spray paint. It's red alkalide enamel spray paint and I'm just going to give them a couple coats and let it dry. And we'll see what it looks like when it's all ready. This is what it looks like after the paint is dry. I really like this paint. It's nice. But this paint is a little too bright. And that's okay because I have a plan for that. I did do the arms separately, not using the spray can, because I wanted to make sure that the ends of the arms are not painted. So they turned out pretty good. I like it. Like I said, the paint is a little too red, but we're going to fix that here in a bit. So these are resin printed parts. I don't know if any of you watching this have done 3D printing before, but when you're doing resin printing, you need to use supports so that your objects build off of the build plate. And then when you pull those supports off, they leave little plastic pieces and so you get to trim all that off so that when you paint it it looks professional and now let's use our Molotow chrome pens this is like a liquid chrome, and these work really great.
going to use this Vallejo paint, a little bit of orange and a little bit of uh, lemon yellow. And I need to paint the eyes because the eyes are kind of like a glow. They kind of glow a bright orange. So to simulate that, I'm going to make it almost, the lemon yellow is going to give it almost like a, like a neon kind of color to it. I'll mix this up until I get the, the color I want and then we'll do some painting. So there's our 3D printed parts, all painted and chromed, and I think they look great. Next, I'm going to try to make my own black wash. Like I said, in the movie, it looks like they have almost like a black wash to them. So I'm gonna make my own using a little bit of this Dawn liquid detergent, water, and some of this Vallejo black paint. This is a water-based acrylic paint. So when you add water to it, it thins it out really thin. And then I saw somebody use just a drop of the liquid soap. Apparently what that does is it allows the paint to evenly distribute across whatever you're painting. And it also makes it kind of go into the corners where you want it to get darker. So I'm just gonna try it on this piece of uh, Constructs and uh, it's red too, and just see how it, how it works. That seemed to be pretty good. I'll add just two little drops of this uh, soap and uh, I think I think it'll be good to go. Just gonna mix this up quite a bit. When I did some experimenting earlier, I put a little bit too much soap in it. As I was spreading it onto the the test piece, uh, all of a sudden I started getting soap suds in my black wash, <laughs> and you don't want that. So I just used a toothpick and used a drop to to add into uh, the black wash and it seems to be working quite well. So we'll get these painted up, get this whole figure painted with a black wash. We'll let it dry and see what it looks like.
and here's our black washed figure. I uh, think that it turned out pretty good. I think it's the correct darkness that I wanted. If I wanted it darker, I could have added more black paint to it. If I wanted it lighter, I could have used less. That's how a black wash uh, uh, works when you mix it. So I think it's perfect. It's exactly kind of what I envisioned in my head when I decided to do this figure. Here's his eye part. And uh, I think it turned out really good. So now we just need to put it together. This is the moment I've been waiting for, and I'm sure you have too. Let's put them together and see how he looks and how the articulation works. Now, on the back part of this, there is a hole. And I believe that's probably for if you want to use a screw to screw the back and the chest together. But uh, I'm just going to glue this with some Gorilla Glue. And I think that'll be fine. I don't ever expect to ever want to take this apart again. Uh, I probably will end up making another one, like I said, again anyway, to make it bigger, like a bigger scale. I'm just going to use this Gorilla Glue and add a little bit to the back. Now, you don't want to add too much because when you squeeze it together, the squeeze out of the glue could get into the joints and you might accidentally glue the head or the limbs in place and we want those to articulate or I do anyway so that's the plan so if I get too much glue in there I can wipe it off so I'm just going to try to keep the glue away from the edges as much as possible and you can see there actually I got too much glue there so I'm going to take just a q-tip and I'm just going to clean off some of that glue you can see here where I cleaned it off. Now my squeeze out isn't going to squeeze out into the joints. As this is gluing, I'm just going to... Uh, Crazy Glue makes resin glue together really quickly if you use a large area. And so I just want to make sure that the shoulders are even and so that they're not overlapping or unlevel. And I'm just going to hold this for about five minutes and we should have our figure you can see the arms are articulating the head articulates and i like the black wash it looks pretty good It'd be nice if it would have black if the black wash would have went on a little bit more evenly but um it kind of has that dirty robot look to it so I think it looks really cool so here's our figure all glued together here's the stand that I made and I think he looks really cool I am really happy with this figure he is going to look awesome with my other black hole figures you can see here that now that he's glued his hips do still move so thanks for watching this episode of Toys Bag Zen. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. Hit the notification bell to be notified for new videos. And leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this 3D printed figure. I'm going to leave the person that created this 3D printed figure down in the description below. And that way, if this is something you'd like to try, if you ever have a 3D printer, or if you have one now, or you decide to get one, you can uh, try it out. And uh, thanks for watching. See ya.